Hello YouTube world, how we doing? Is everyone hanging in there right now? Welcome to another edition of Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. I'm Rebecca, I am the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in Brevard, North Carolina. And today we are going to talk about German short rows. I've had a few requests for this. Now, German short rows are an alternative to the classic wrap and turn short rows that you may have heard about. I actually have some videos on wraps and turns and how to use them in the Papillon, which is garter. It means there's, there's uh, what I call turtlenecks and v-necks for the front side and the back side of knit stitches. You have them on both sides. Now, when you have the bumps on both sides, you can hide wraps and turns without having to do anything fancy to them when you come back to them. For a lot of things like sweaters, they're starting to use short rows to shape the backs of them, to make things higher or lower, or to shape waistlines, to do all kinds of cool things. I almost dropped my sweater. Um, this is the sweater I'm working on currently, and it has short rows along the back side to help with shaping. And I would be hard pressed to even show you one because when they are stockinette like this, I like to do, in fact, maybe there's a little one there, a little bit of a hole, but not as big as it could be. I like to do something called a German short row, which in instead of a wrap and turn is awful, often called a turn and wrap. It's a way to make things smoother. It's easier to deal with when you come back to it to not have it be seen. And we're going to go over some basics today. So here we go. So short rows are where we don't actually knit all the way across the row. You're not doing that. You are stopping and you are turning around in the middle of a row. Now, if I did that without doing any kind of prep work, I just turned around in the middle of the row, what is going to happen, what it's going to look like from the front side is we're just going to add another row of our hearts or V-shaped stitches right here. And especially once we come back to it, if we knit back across, we're going to have an edge here. We're going to have a sharp edge. And if we try to knit straight across this and continue on, we're going to have a gap. We're going to have a hole. Instead of having a hard edge where there might be a hole, what we need to do is we need to turn that into more of a triangle over here. We need to try to cover up that hole. And you do that by doing what is often called a wrap and turn, or abbreviated as W and T. And if we can back this picture up a little bit, when we're at that spot four stitches in, before we head back, we will actually slip this stitch and wrap the yarn around it before heading up here to get our next row in. And it, it smooths things out. Believe it or not, it smooths things out. Now, when we're doing things like this, which are called stockinette, where all the V's are on one side, as opposed to garter, where you've got V's and turtlenecks on both sides, fronts and backs of knit stitches, when you have fronts and backs of knit stitches, you can do something like the wrap and turn that I demonstrate in my other video about red or orange squares. If you want it to look really smooth when all the V's are on one side, you need to pick this guy up and knit it with this guy. They have to get knit together and that can be a little bit complicated. So what I like to do when I'm doing short rows, on stockinette. I like to turn them in. I, I like to rather do German short rows, which are a little different. Instead of doing a wrap and turn, you more do, do a turn and wrap. You actually are going to knit one more stitch 
before heading back. And then there's a neat funky thing you do once you turn it around. So let's see that. So I've, I am supposed to knit four stitches and then wrap and turn. So I've actually knit five. I turn my work around. See if I can get this in the frame. So I turn the work around. Here is that extra stitch that I have knit. Now it looks like a purl stitch with these turtleneck bumps. I am going to slip it back onto this needle. So if I can tr attempt to draw that, if I slip that back, that means this needle is here. This needle, let me get a better angle on it maybe. This needle now has three stitches on it. And I'm going to take this yarn, which goes to my ball band, and I'm going to wrap it up and over my right needle and back to the front. It's going to yank this whole stitch up and over. It's turning and wrapping, so it actually will end up looking. I will almost look like I've got two stitches. It tends to look a little bit like a cross if you're looking down on it. I will have two sti what looks like two stitches yanked over my needle and then I can purl back that way. And when I come back to this, I can purl or knit directly through both of those strands through the center. I'll try to show you that with the actual knitting to show you what happens. So it's knitting or purling an extra stitch and yanking it up over the needle. In either case, your yarn needs to be in front to do this. On the purl side, it is in front. It's awesome. On the knit side, it's a little different. A little hard to draw, but I just wanted you to get the concept. Extra stitches worked. It is slipped back and it is yanked up and over your right needle before you continue. So here's a little piece of knitting that I have. More than the four stitches of the demonstration, but I want to show a purl one on the other side. So we'll jump around as we need to so you don't need to just sit here watching me knit. But say we're at the point in the instructions where it says, okay, this stitch should be wrapped and turned. Now instead of doing that, I'm going to do a German short row, which means I knit the stitch that says it needs to be wrapped and turned. I will turn the work around. Instead, I turn and wrap. So this is the one. I'm going to slip it back to my right needle. And then I'm going to yank that up and over and back to the front because I need to purl next. Now if you take a look at this, I need to hold it. I don't want it to be a yarn over. I actually want it to it yanked the stitch underneath up and over my needle. So if I look down at the top of it, it would look like a little crisscross interlocked X. If I look at it from the side facing me, it kind of looks like two strands where there was one. But again, I want to pull that pretty snug and I'm going to start knitting back across. Oh, excuse me, I am purling. Let's not get totally confusing, right? So I'm going to purl, let's say it's it, the pattern said purl one, two, three, four, and do a wrap and turn. So instead, I'm going to purl that stitch, that's, and then I'm going to turn and wrap. Now here's the deal with going from a purl to a knit row, it's a little different. The purl row, my yarn was already in front when I turned it when I turn to start my purl row. So I could just yank it up and over. Before you slip a stitch back, your yarn needs to be in front. This is where most things can get off. Move your yarn to the front if it's not there already. Slip that last stitch back over. And now you wanna yank it up and over your needle and put it where it needs to be to do your next row. Now since I'm knitting, I want my yarn in back. And if I yank on that, remember if I settle it and show you, it looks once again like a crisscross. 
especially if I knit the next stitch. I'll keep that taut so it doesn't become a crazy looking yarn over. But if I look back at it, I have a crisscross here. Now, here's the one from the row before. Let's say my instruction said, just knit around or purl around, picking up the stitches, picking up the wraps, if it wasn't written as a German wrap pattern as you go. It might say working the double stitches. It might say working the wrap if it's written for German wraps. I'm coming right up on it here. I can tell there's a wrap because there's a weird gap here. And this looks funny. You want to treat it kind of like knitting two together. Or you want to treat it like you are knitting through the center of this. The center of this, two strands in back, two strands in front. I get my needle in there and I'm going to go ahead and knit it. And then I can knit the next one and so forth. I'm only going to do a, well, let's see, I'll go all the way to the end. I can show you what it looks like in just a second. So if I go back and look at this, it's right in here. If I dig for it, I can see it in here, but it's pretty smooth. But see, there's two rows here where there's only one row for the rest of it. That's the short row. I'm going to get back to this one on the purl side. It's over here. Again, if you pull on it, you can kind of see a weird space. But I don't think you need to watch me doing all these stitches, so I'll probably cut out a little of this. Let me get back to it. All right, we are almost here. Here is my Chrissy Crossy. And things might not be crisscrossed quite so cleanly, but that's okay. It's still, if I look at the top, looks like an X. Get my fingers out of the way. I want to go under two strands or through the center, which means the two strands here, two strands back there. I'm, I'm right under that crisscross. And I just go ahead and purl it together. Is <laughs> my needles whack that table? I'm more comfortable knitting on circulars, but I think these videos work pretty bet pretty well with my flats because they're big and show stuff off well. So if I hold this out, there's a spot in the center here where there are more rows than either side. But you can't really see where my wrap and turns were unless you're really examining for it. It's why I like when you've got all the V's on one side. I really like German short rows. So thanks for coming along on our journey of German short rows. I think they're very cool. I probably mentioned in the beginning there's a lot of sweater backs being shaped this way. All the fun things, can you see where the German short rows are? Maybe, maybe not. There's lots of ways these are being used. I mentioned before that I don't think do, when you're doing garter, when there's bumps on both sides, that you need to take the lengths to do the German short row. But if it's your favorite short row, please use it anytime you need to use it. I also want to start bringing up that I know a lot of us may be stuck at home for a while and not know how long. And I hope you're watching this on the other side where we're all out and about again. But I hope these videos work and help for you to continue your crafting journey. I'm also looking into getting started some one-on-one -on -one lessons online, perhaps through Zoom, perhaps through some other techniques, FaceTime, things like that ways that we can keep our business going and keep you guys going and keep everyone on this crafting journey together. So please consider donating money uh, to the channel or to the shop. I'll try to maybe put in a PayPal link or communicating with us if you want help, if you want one-on-one -on -one lessons with me. I may be having time to do a lot more of that in the future. And while these videos can help, I find nothing beats some one-on-one, -on -one, here's what you did wrong, here's what's going right, let's celebrate, let's get you moving forward. My fees are probably going to be something like $15 per appointment, or if we're doing a project where we might need to meet multiple times, we'll figure out something so you're not paying out the kazoo for, uh, for more visits. Visits. Anyway. 
consider it. Let me know what you think. And in the meantime, may your crafting journeys be confident and joyful. We'll see you again here soon. Thanks a lot. Hi, kitty. You're in my spot. Oh, yes. The spot I use for editing. Since you decided to leave me alone for making the video, you're going to be in the warm spot I used to edit, huh? Yes. You're the other star of the YouTube video, so I have to at least show you a little bit. You want to say hi? <laughs> yes, you are a cat. You have no need to say hi.